Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So we're going to start out with the gold chart and what I wanted to point out specifically is this reaction to the French election. But uh, not that there's any real fundamentals there because we know that the, the manipulators use events as an opportunity to uh, in, have smackdowns or rallies or whatever but what's really of note here is you can see that the market traded on no volume uh, right here until it traded down gap down about 10 bucks and then rallied about 20 bucks 15 bucks so this is a fake market obviously uh, real markets don't do things like that and when you see something like that you know you're playing a dangerous game if you're in a paper market what one of the things that something like this does is it takes out all the stops so if you have a sell stop below this price here let's say you've gone long gold you think you picked a bottom looks kinda like a bottom there you can see the way that it's formed what one of these things does is if you had set a stop down below here in case you were wrong then this takes your stop out and basically you buy at a low price you get a loss and then the market just continues on as if nothing ever happened rigged markets dangerous game now let me show you a more dangerous game this is one I've been playing and let me warn you it is very dangerous this is a chart of stellar which is a coin on Poloniex that I've been trading I actually started trading it at this initial breakout here this coin has moved from this is their digits uh, that are it goes eight zeros back basically uh, it's a percentage of Bitcoin but the price of it was 300 the last zeros uh, back in here and you can see a huge spike when interest came in and then it crashed of course and then the uh, long slow process of the bull market started <laughs> when I say long so slow process I'm, I'm kind of uh, being ironic here because you can see that this started on May 3rd so it's really only been a few days that this has happened that we've gone from 300 to 4700 so we're talking about a 15 fold move now what's even more shocking about this move is that what we had happen today was a crash but the Poloniex site went down and you can see from the volume the way the volume went to uh, very low there a spike in volume no volume here uh, that's because the exchange was down so when you're talking about trading something on an exchange that goes down when you need to get out it's very similar to the gold chart uh, you're playing a very dangerous game this uh, move down basically caused a 60% loss for people who had bought just at this top. Now I think it's going to be quite a long time before this recovers. That's the way these things tend to go uh, when you have a parabolic move up. Uh, it, it's definitely trying to rally. Uh, also this coin is only traded on Poloniex. That's a big red flag when you don't have any uh, type of arbitrage that's possible between exchanges. You have one exchange and there's also a very serious question of collusion and uh, manipulation possibly so that's the main reason that when I trade these I usually play for a breakout I pretty much played the breakouts on this one so when we get a pennant form and we break into new highs uh, I either buy on the breakout or I buy on the fallback and I try to get a chunk of the run-up and then get out and uh, that ended up being very good for me because I was actually playing this coin up in here but I was getting in and getting out very quickly and that's exactly why you do that uh, you can get stuck and so if you're doing that be very very careful um, 
if we go over to the USDT, we can see that Bitcoin's over here at uh, 1651 in USDT. I had thought that we would have topped by now and been turning down, but you can see that it may actually go into new highs. Uh, I still stand by the idea that it's time to start converting some cryptocurrencies into cash or even better than that silver uh, because there's going to be a point I've watched this market since 2011 and the tremendous run-ups end up being followed by long long periods of just downward slow grinding or just sideways nothing it goes from being very very active very very profitable to absolutely dead I think at some point that's coming um, we don't know when if you look at the Bitfinex chart you can see we're at 1654 it looks like we want to challenge the old highs but just like the stellar chart uh, when you start to see those parabolic moves you need to be very very careful because things can go against you very fast now let me cover this uh, well, I was going to cover the story on uh, on Puerto Rico, but uh, basically Puerto Rico has declared bankruptcy. Uh, it's sort of a limited bankruptcy. If you remember, I covered the fact that Puerto Rico, when they when they pitched those bonds to the public, they told them that they can't go bankrupt. That was uh, part of the deal. That was one of the reasons why such an insolvent entity, such a bad risk, was able to get loans at relatively low yields. Uh, the yield should have been 15 and 20 percent the whole time because uh, it was just a, a terrible uh, risk to loan money to the profligate politicians of Puerto Rico. But they're not the only profligate politicians. This is an article from the Chicago Tribune uh, comparing Puerto Rico and Illinois and Illinois is in a bad situation let me read this paragraph to you to show you how ridiculous it is the state's sprawling pension liability crisis and the legislature's failure to fix its yields fix it yields a dismal 48th ranking in the nation third worst among the states a 2017 report from Pew Charitable Trust says Illinois with its pension system funded at only 40% in 2015 is ahead of only New Jersey and Kentucky. Overall, its unfunded debt related to pensions and retiree health costs for local and state government workers totals $267 billion, the Illinois Policy Institute calculates, about $56,000 per household. Think about that. $56,000 per household. How many of those households are actually taxpayers? And of those taxpayers, how many of those taxpayers actually make enough income to owe money to the government rather than get uh, earned income tax credit? Uh, how many of those taxpayers are government workers? So this number is even worse than this. but how many households have fifty six thousand uh, dollars virtually none so you can see that uh, it's already the game is already over they're just uh, they just are waiting for the final shoe to drop uh, and and they point out here in this article that's why people are leaving and it's climbing fast one reason people leave Illinois is to escape taxes that each household can expect to pay to pair the debt the conservative think tank says that's also a powerful reason not to bring your business here now that same thing has been happening in Puerto Rico uh, there's an exodus of people who work and pay taxes and the people that stay work for the government collect welfare so it's going to get a lot worse for Puerto Rico before it gets better but that's a precursor of what we're going to see uh, coming for Illinois probably California and maybe even just dominoes one after the other and they may end up making it possible for states to declare bankruptcy and uh, they're 
predicting now that this Puerto Rico thing is going to be drawn out for the next 10 years. Uh, there are some of the creditors that actually made a deal before this PROMISA bill was passed, but now they've frozen lawsuits again. Once that uh, window of lawsuits against Puerto Rico uh, had expired, then they all went into court and filed lawsuits, and uh, the that's when the board, the governing board, allowed them to declare bankruptcy and they turned around and locked it again so there can't be any lawsuits. So this is going to drag on for a very long time and uh, you know there's not going to be any fast or easy resolution to it and we're going to see the same thing in the states. So that's why it's critical even though we have an absolute uh, near bear market in silver again we have this rolling over I'm expecting probably new lows in silver it's going to be a, a good stacking opportunity but you have to remember that eventually and I know it seems like forever but eventually these things are going to go up in flames and then the only thing standing is going to be something real now I actually believe that cryptocurrencies are something real but you have to actually take delivery of that. Now I covered before how you can pull your coins down into a wallet. Uh, if you leave them on an exchange such as Poloniex, uh, I have been burned by exchanges multiple times. Uh, I managed to get my coins off of Mt. Gox before it went under, but I lost coins when Verkurex went under. I lost coins, some coins when Cripsy went under. And there's a possibility that this exchange, uh, especially when you see them shut down during a busy market, uh, they can blame computers. But I actually did the calculation. You can see here that the volume in this Stellar coin, which is number one in volume on the exchange uh, with Ripple right behind it, the volume on this uh, with the percentage that they take for fees, which is around 0.25%. I did a calculation of this 161,000 Bitcoins times the price of Bitcoin times that 0.25%. And just today, just on this coin, they collected $725,000 in fees. And yet, they can't manage to keep their servers up uh, during uh, a crash like this and uh, that affected the other coins you can see here I'll show you some other charts you can see that clam has a similar uh, chart to it um, another one that I was trading uh, well ripple also took a big hit not nearly as bad you can see ripples going into new highs but there were a lot of coins that were affected I believe steam that's another one that I've been trading uh, it took a big hit when that crash occurred. That's right here. And that's when the exchange shut down. So this is a very, very dangerous game. The way I'm playing it is when I get some profits, I either take the profits as Bitcoin, I take the profits as dollars where I sell the Bitcoin, or I'm planning to, I have not yet, waiting for a big downturn in silver, take the profits uh, in physical silver, get them out of there and uh, get them locked away because it's a very, very dangerous game. And we'll talk to you next time.